Hey guys, uh, welcome to Main Bugging In and Bugging Out. This is going to be kind of a quick video. I did not realize when, I, when we were making this that there were pieces that the camera wasn't connected to the microphone receiver. So I'm going to kind of walk through this video as a uh, voiceover. I don't think it'll be as bad. This first piece we're actually talking about, a lot of people on... Uh, on social media, they will try and I, they'll see an idea and they want to try it themselves. And I, I completely get that. I was the same way. I saw this idea, uh, a terracotta pot and candle used as an emergency heat source. So I decided to, to try it out. I wanted to see how well it worked. And I'm just the average guy, like person like you. And I, I will say for the record that it was very, it was, it's very easy to do. The pot was like $2 and 80 cents at Home Depot. Uh, tea lights are cheap as dirt. So, uh, you know, it's not a huge investment to have some of these around kicking around your house. Uh, I did, I used a cookie sheet and you'll see later this didn't completely work. Uh, oh, no, a cookie sheet, a cupcake pan. I was trying to leave air flow around the candles uh, from an, under the pot. Obviously, this works best. Uh, the more heat you have under the pot, the more it's going to conduct and, and dissipate through the pot into the, into the atmosphere. So, um, but the thing is, you know, you it depends on how many you want to use. I will say, I don't think one tea light uh, is going to cut it. In a, let's say you're in a Texas situation, um, Maine situation, any place that's cold. So uh, I did four, and it did, it did very well uh, with four tea lights. The cupcake thing did not work. I, I had to elevate it some more. I just used some metal shelf brackets. You'll see that uh, later. So anyway, uh, I think we'll go to the next piece here and kind of move on with the tea lights. I started with four tea lights and just the pot and a cupcake. And well, once we uh, got the candles lit, first I, I measured the temperature of the clay pot, um, you know, before we did anything else. And you, you saw that it was about 70 degrees uh, unlit um, before it was sitting on the candle. So you just light the candles. But it's, like I said, it's a very easy process to do. Uh, my my concern was how well is it going to heat a small space, uh, and like I said earlier, the more candles you have, obviously the more heat you're going to have. You don't want something that's going to make the pot flame and hot because if you have small children or someone who's not paying attention, they can get burned. This actually puts out a fairly decent amount of heat without getting hot enough to really burn someone. I mean, if you touch, if you held on to it for a longer period of time, yeah, I guess, I mean, it would be too hot to, to, to keep your hands on it, but an immediate touch doesn't burn. Now, you see the hole on the top. You place the pot over the candles, and you have to cover that hole. Uh, I, just anything metal. Uh, a lot of people I've seen use quarters. Um, this is just a cap that I had, an old cap I had from a propane lantern. So, again, you, you could probably use, like, a, a the lid of a can or a, a soda top, if they even still make beer can, beer, beer bottle top. If it's big enough, flatten it out. You just want to cover that hole so the pot will absorb the heat. Uh, and then you leave it, you know. We're going to take the temperature here again, and you'll see uh, it's already up to from 70 up to about 90, 95, 96 in the same spot, and we just covered it. So uh, we're gonna probably leave it for a little bit and we'll come back and take a look. Okay, so we're back. It's been a little over an hour. It's been maybe an hour, 10 minutes. And we're gonna measure the temperature again. You can see it's up quite a bit, 157. 
Uh, and it's been about, like I said, it's been about an hour. The candles are still burning. If you look at the bottom of the pot, I had to elevate it more. The uh, cupcake pan didn't work quite as well as I had hoped. Uh, there was not enough airflow, so I had to lift it up. Uh, but it's still 100 and in the middle of the pot. It's about 160, 167. And at the top, we measured it 158. That's uh, pretty good. Uh, and like I said, I would you can feel the heat coming off of it. But it's not too hot where you can see that you can't touch it. So uh, is it something that I would use to heat as my primary heat source? No. Uh, but I would say, you know, that uh, do I believe that it would keep someone from freezing? Yes. If you sealed off one room and you had one or two of these going, yes, absolutely. I mean, 160, 170. Uh, a maximum got up to about 190 degrees total. Uh, and, and those were with tea lights. So if you were to use like a, a bigger candle, like the emergency ones we're getting ready to make in this video here, your results would be, I think, even better. So moving on to the next piece, uh, which is emergency candles. Super easy again. I've said in other videos that prepping doesn't have to be expensive and this is one of those things uh, I think total cost per candle is about a dollar fifty ish these uh, vegetable shortening Crisco I just happen to have some Crisco but you see the other one was just a Walmart brand same thing uh, basically I'm just gonna call it for the video we're gonna call it Crisco um, you you're gonna put this in a pot and you're not going to cook it. Remember, uh, hydrogenized uh, vegetable oil uh, is like almost, it's like a butter, uh, a butter, really. You, it does not have to be on a high heat to melt. This, this stuff will melt around 80, 85 degrees. Uh, so you, when you put it in a pot like this, you're not going to crank the heat up. You're not making french fries or fried chicken. You don't need it ripping hot. It's just enough to melt it i mean when this melts I, I it was only warm enough for me i could stick my fingers in it and i i didn't i should have should just to show you guys but so it's not it's really not that hot uh it's just to melt it to make it easier to pour into mason jars and we use mason jars because they are uh they're durable but they're also heat resistant uh they're you know they're made to go uh, at high temperatures and i mean it's a candle it's really not going to I've never had any problems with these candles, uh, at, like cracking glass or anything like that. So it's not, hasn't happened yet. It doesn't mean it won't, but anyway, uh, we use mason jars because they're durable, heat resistant, and they have lids because, uh, if you're going to transport these anywhere, they will store at room temperature, just like they do in the big can. You're just melting it to pour it into smaller jars. So... I use the mason jars. They they work well. They have lids, and again, the mason. If if the temperature for some reason does go up uh, where you are, you can. They have lids, so if they if they do tend to melt or liquefy, uh, they're contained. You know, you can use any kind of container, glass. Jar. I just prefer glass because it's it's uh, safer for heat. Most of your candles come in some kind of ceramic glass type container anyway, so. We're going to let this uh, melt up, and then we're going to come back and uh, take a look at it. You can stir it. Uh, you don't really have to. I mean, it, it's going to melt. I, you know, I, I just kind of chop it around a little bit until it, it does melt. And my son's helped me with his video, so he's going to take over the stirring. Uh, and I kind of narrate, uh, you know... I'm, I narrate in this part of the video, and I, I'm sorry about the crack when I'm creaking in my chair. Uh, super professional. We're still, we're still figuring stuff out here, but uh, this is what you ultimately want to end up with. You're going to have a mason jar, and inside is your pre-made wick, which is just a birthday candle. Uh, and I know it seems, uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Um, because the birthday candles just are easier. You could tie any string, put it down in the melted 
uh, Crisco and then let it uh, solidify around the string. Your birthday candles are just pre, they're easy to insert. I mean, they just, you put them in, poof, done. So here, this is what it's starting to look like. Kind of looks. So I'm going to stop editing here, or, uh, doing this voice over here. The next piece, I actually have our microphones working again. Melt this up. They're going to pour it into jars, and you'll see what it, the end result looks like. All right, YouTubers, this is the last piece of this video. And so we left off with it melting in the pot. And now we poured the melted uh, vegetable shortening into the mason jars. And to make these, you can let them sit or you can put them, what we did is put them in the refrigerator so they uh, become solid again so the last piece to this is going to be the wicks so we're going to show you how to do that seal them up and then we're done all right go so then you take the candle you're just going to insert it in the middle and push it almost all the way down you're only going to leave a little bit at the uh at the top a little bit more there you go that's it you're going to do the, the, the other two. Um, here, you can put that on. And that's all you have to do. That's the whole candle. Um, I'll show you. We'll do the next one and actually light it. And so you can see these burn really well. Uh, uh, two cans made 12 candles. So it's very inexpensive. About $6 for the vegetable shortening. And then a dollar for the candle. So um, for the for the birthday candles. I mean, if you have mason jars, great. I, I mean, I bought more, so you're looking at maybe eight dollars for the for the for the mason jars. So all said and done, it's roughly about a dollar, dollar twenty-five a candle. And these ones here, actually, light this one. You don't like this small one. Uh, so you can see how it actually works, but. These, this size candle will burn for about a week, five, six hours a day for about a week. So, there we go. So, just like the, there, good. So now you just, that's it. I mean, it, you let it, like I said, it, uh, it's, it's harder to see. I'm gonna maybe come out a little bit so you can see. We should do a time lapse of one. Yeah, I know, like for a whole week. Yeah. There. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted you guys to see. Super easy. No excuse not to do it. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll, we'll read them and get back to you. So that's it for now. Main bugging in. Bugging out. That's it, you guys. Uh, very two very easy projects. Uh, you should you should really try these. For yourself if you haven't uh, now you know how we do it you may have a different or a better idea and put them in the comments or put some links or whatever you can uh, we're always open to new things so uh, until next time this is Maine bugging in bugging out <laughs>